Hi guys, welcome to my study compass. In this video, I'll be walking you through the past paper, Math B1, Variant 3, October November 2021. Let's get started. Write 1 over 2 as a percentage. To convert 1 over 2 to a percentage, we multiply 1 over 2 by 100%. This gives us 50%. Write 0 0.7 as a fraction. When we type 0 0.7 into the calculator, we get the fraction equivalent to be 7 over 10. Write 11 over 20 as a decimal. When we type this into the calculator, we get the decimal equivalent as 0 0.55. Points A and B are plotted on the grid. Write down the coordinate of point B. The x coordinate of point B is 2 and the y coordinate of point B is 3. So we have 2, 3. Write AB as a vector. To move from point A to point B, we go 4 units to the right and 5 units upwards. And so the vector AB is 4, 5. On the grid, plot the point C at negative 2, 3. When we map negative 2 from the x-axis and 3 from the y-axis, we are able to pin point C. Find the number of minutes in 4 and half hours. 1 hour is 60 minutes, so to convert 4 and half hours to minutes, we multiply 4 and half by 60. This gives us 270 minutes. Write down the mathematical name of this solid. The solid drawn is a cone. Cheng spins a first six-sided spinner, numbered 1 to 6. On the probability scale, draw an arrow to show the probability that the spinner lands on 4. The probability that the spinner lands on 4 is equal to the number of 4s on the spinner, which is 1, divided by the total number of numbers on the spinner, which is 6. So we have 1 over 6. The scale has been split into 6 equal parts, so we put the arrow on the first mark to indicate 1 over 6. For this list of numbers, find the mode. The mode is simply the most recurring number. From the list, this number is 16. Find the median. The median is the middle number. To get the median, we first need to rearrange the numbers in ascending order. The total number of numbers in the list is 9. So to get the position of the median, we find half of n plus 1, where n is 9 in this case. This gives us 5. The number in the fifth position is 33. r equals 2t plus 3u. Work out the value of t when r equals 18 and u equals 4. When we plug in r equals 18 and u equals 4 into the given equation, this is what we have. 3 times 4 is 12. When we subtract 12 from both sides, we get 2t equals 6. When we divide both sides by 2, we get t equals 3. The temperature at midnight was negative 8 degrees Celsius. The temperature at noon is 6 degrees Celsius. Work out the difference between these two temperatures. The temperature difference is simply the final temperature, which is 6 degrees Celsius, minus the initial temperature, which is negative 8 degrees Celsius. When we type this into the calculator, we get 14 degrees Celsius. 
The temperature at 7 a.m. is 5 degrees Celsius higher than the temperature at midnight. Work out the temperature at 7 a.m. To get the temperature at 7 a.m., we add 5 degrees Celsius to the temperature at midnight, which is negative 8 degrees Celsius. This gives us negative 3 degrees Celsius. The probability that it rains tomorrow is 0.47. Find the probability that it does not rain tomorrow. The sum of the probabilities that it rains and does not rain must add up to 1. So to get the probability that it does not rain, we subtract 0.47 from 1, giving us 0.53. Write 26 grams as a percentage of 208 grams. When we set up the percentage equation, the value after the of, in this case 208 grams, would be the denominator. So we have 26 grams divided by 208 grams times 100%, which is equal to 12.5%. From this list, write down the number that is both a prime number and a factor of 195. 13 is a prime number and it is also a factor of 195. Put a ring around each of the symbols that make this statement correct. To be able to compare the two numbers, we convert 0.5 to a percentage by multiplying 0.5 by 100%. This gives us 50%. Based on this, we can say that 50% is not equal to 5% and we can also say that 50% is greater than 5%. Insert one pair of brackets to make this statement correct. When we put the brackets around 3 minus 1, we are able to make the given statement true. 3 minus 1 is 2, so 7 minus 2 plus 2 is 7. The diagram shows two parallel lines intersecting a straight line. Find the value of x. These two are alternate angles, and alternate angles are equal. Angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees, and so x plus 132 degrees should be equal to 180 degrees. When we subtract 132 from both sides, we have x equals 48 degrees. These are the first four terms of a sequence. Find the next term. We see that the terms have a common difference of plus 6. So to get the next term, we add 6 to 35. This gives us 41. These are the first four terms of a different sequence. Find the next term in this sequence. We see that the terms have a common difference of minus 4. So to get the next term, we subtract 4 from negative 9. This gives us negative 13. Find the nth term. This is the nth term formula for sequences with a common difference. A1 is the first term of the sequence and that is 3. D is the common difference which is negative 4. When we simplify this, we get 7 minus 4n. Sarah takes 5 tests. Her mean score is 62. She takes another test and her mean score is now 68. Work out her score in the sixth test. Here is the mean formula. For the six tests, we've been given the mean to be 68. The sum of the six tests would be the sum of the five tests plus the score of the sixth test, which we are calling x. We want to find the value of x, so let's make x the subject. When we multiply both sides by 6, we get 408 equals s5 plus x. When we make x the subject, this is what we have. We've been given the mean for the five tests to be 62, which is equal to 
the sum of the five tests divided by five. When we multiply both sides by five, we get the sum of the five tests to be 310. So now x is 408 minus 310, which is equal to 98. Nina changes 153 euros into dollars when the exchange rate is $1 equals 0.9 euros. Calculate the amount Nina receives. First, we set up the conversion ratio. When we cross multiply and make x the subject, this is what we have. When we type this into the calculator, we get $170. The area of this trapezium is 96 centimeters squared. Find the value of y. Here is the formula for the area of a trapezium. A and B are the parallel sides of the trapezium, which in this case are 7 centimeters and y centimeters. The height of the trapezium is 12 centimeters and we've been given the area to be 96 centimeters squared. Half times 12 is 6. When we divide both sides by 6, this is what we have. When we subtract 7 from both sides, we get y equals 9. Marek buys a computer for $420. He sells it at a loss of 15%. Calculate the selling price of this computer. Since he is selling at a loss of 15%, we subtract 15% from 100%, giving us 85%. So the selling price is 85% times $420, which is equal to $357. Calculate the radius of a circle with circumference 26 centimeters. This is the formula for the circumference of a circle. We want to find R, so we make R the subject. The circumference C of the circle has been given as 26 centimeters. When we type this into the calculator, we get 4.14 centimeters rounded to three significant figures. By writing each number in the calculation correct to one significant figure, find an estimate for the value of 4.3 times 30.7 divided by 6.6 .6 minus 1.8. The first significant figure in 4.3 is 4. The number after 4, which is 3, is less than 5. So we maintain 4 and the number after 4 becomes 0. So 4.3 becomes 4. The first significant figure in 30.7 is 3. The number after 3 which is 0 is less than 5. So we maintain 3 and the numbers after 3 become 0. So 30.7 becomes 30. The first significant figure in 6.6 .6 is 6. The number after 6, which is 6, is greater than 5. So we add 1 to 6, giving us 7. And the number after 6 becomes 0. So 6.6 .6 becomes 7. The first significant figure in 1.8 is 1. The number after 1, which is 8, is greater than 5. So we add 1 to 1, giving us 2. And the number after 1 becomes 0. So 1.8 becomes 2. 2. 4 times 30 is 120 and 7 minus 2 is 5. 120 divided by 5 is 24. Find the interior angle of a regular 7-sided polygon. Here is the formula for the size of an interior angle in a regular polygon, where n is the number of sides of the polygon. In this case, n is 7. When we type this into the calculator, we get 128.6 degrees rounded to one decimal place. Without using a calculator, work out 11 over 12 plus 
3 over 4. You must show all your working and give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. The LCM of 12 and 4 is 12. For 11 over 12, since we multiply 12 by 1 to get the LCM, we also need to multiply 11 by 1, which gives us 11. For 3 over 4, since we multiply 4 by 3 to get the LCM, we also need to multiply 3 by 3, which gives us 9. 11 plus 9 is 20. 4 goes into 20 5 times and 4 goes into 12 3 times. 5 over 3 is an improper fraction, so we convert it into a mixed fraction. 3 goes into 5 one time with a remainder of 2, which we divide by 3. Simplify 32g raised to the power 32 divided by 4g raised to the power 4. So we have 32 divided by 4. And since the g terms are also dividing, we subtract their powers. So we have g raised to the power 32 minus 4. 32 minus 4 is 28 and 32 divided by 4 is 8. And so our final answer is 8g raised to the power 28. Factorize completely. 10j minus 15j squared. The terms have a common factor of 5j. When we factor that out, we are left with 2 minus 3j. Expand the brackets and simplify. x plus 7 times x plus 3. First, x multiplies each of the terms in the other bracket. So x times x is x squared and x times 3 is 3x. Now 7 also multiplies each of the terms in the other brackets. So 7 times x is 7x and 7 times 3 is 21. 3x plus 7x is 10x. And so our final answer is x squared plus 10x plus 21. Calculate the value of x. To find the value of x, we apply the Pythagoras theorem. This gives us x squared equals 8.6 squared plus 12.9 squared. To make x the subject, we take square root of both sides. When we type this into the calculator, we get 15.5 rounded to three significant figures. Show that the value of y is 5.9 correct to two significant figures. To get the value of y, we apply Sokatwa. This gives us cos 50 degrees equals 3.8 divided by y. When we make y the subject, this is what we have. When we type this into the calculator, we get 5.91, which is approximately 5.9 rounded to two significant figures. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. See you in the next video. Bye guys.